are recording it as well. So we'll be able to share it with media members who are joining us virtually. When you okay. answer, if you could please look into the lake. Oh, uh, so you got it. Awesome. So welcome, Yasmin. Exciting new adventure in New York. Uh, <laughs> sorry, do I look in this the whole time? Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> So that the people on the other side can okay get it. Um, but tell us about being in New York um, and this new adventure. Um, being in New York is really fun. Um, this is a different area that is filled with lots of opportunities and and great things. So um, I'm excited to be here and explore more. And you signed a nice contract, um, kind of reinforcing your commitment to the club. Tell us that what that means to you and what you're looking forward to. Yeah, um, it means a lot to me that I will be here for long term. Um, it's going to be a process um, getting this team where we want to go. And so I'm glad to be here um, every step of the way with them. Um, what's the second part of the question? Sorry. Just what you're looking forward to. Oh, I'm looking forward to getting started and playing and, and showing the fans and everybody watching um, what we've worked so hard in preseason. Um, for and um, yeah, just just getting started, winning games, and doing doing what we what we came to do. All right, we'll first start with questions in the room. Any questions in the room? Yep. Just please give your name and your media outlet. Um, Cameron Albert, Hudson River Blue. Um, can you talk a little bit about the preseason game you played down in Florida? Um, a little bit specifically about what positions you were playing and what it was like playing with your team. Yeah, so uh, the first game in Florida against Orlando, um, I played outside forward, um, and it was it was good. Um, just developing different partnerships um, with either the outside back or the midfielder at the time, um, and understanding how we all kind of play um, when it comes to game time. Uh, the rest of the I didn't end up playing against Florida State, um, just a minor like hamstring just trying to be uh, preventative. But so the last game um, I actually played the eight um, and that's something that I had been training. Um, I'd been training in that position a little bit more. Um, and so it was good to kind of see that in game form and um, see how I best fit um, within the team. All right, we have another question from the room. And we'll take one from online from Nubia Finklin. Again, to those online, please raise your hand if you have a question. Nubia, your line is open. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Nubia with the Shea Butter FC podcast. So um, talking about you with the Texas Christian University, and we've seen in recent years people like Mosiah Bright join the league as well as Brian Williams with um, North Carolina. So just your thoughts on TCU becoming an upcoming program from you know D1 soccer to joining the National Women's Soccer League. Yeah, I'm so proud to um, have more of my TCU uh, former teammates in the league. I think it shows a lot what how TCU, how far TCU has come. I remember my freshman year, that was the goal is to be a top program. Um, and so to see all of it come to life and more players from TCU coming into the league is so just amazing. And I'm so proud um, of all the players who worked hard to get here and then the coaching and um, the organization as well for just continuing to push forward and set high standards. So um, yeah, it's, it's so cool to, to be amongst them in the league. Jenna. Hi, it's Jenna Tonelli. I'm um, nice to meet you in person. I spoke the other day. Yeah. Um, but can you just talk a little bit about today and just kind of like seeing the New Jersey and, you know, taking all the pictures. Does it feel like it's kind of getting real the season yeah. starting and like, this next adventure with Gotham, like how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's it's really exciting. I um, I feel like this media day specifically is like just shows what kind of like New York, like Gotham Jersey is all about. Um, just I in my mind, I just think about like fashion and like just how like cool everything is. And so the how everything's set up is definitely really cool. The hair and makeup, I like that was my first time getting like that kind of okay. done. Um, so that was really fun. And um, yeah, it, it gets me um, very excited to start. And how, what do you think about the kit? The new kit? Oh, I love them. They look so good. Yeah, they they're really, really cool. I like them a lot. All right, a reminder to our media members, um, if you have a question, so you click the raise hand icon. Anyone in the room, feel free to raise your hand. <coughs> yeah, go ahead. Hi, uh, Courtney, you guys for United, and I also now, right, like sometimes. <laughs> um, 
I guess I'm curious what it's like, you know, heading into your third season of the league. Um, if any lessons are learned, or you, like uh, what goals you have for yourself for the season coming up? Or the season coming up? Yeah, um, with my third season, it's kind of weird thinking about like that it's already year three. Um, I still feel like a rookie at some uh, sometimes, but I've learned so much uh, being in this league. You know, I feel like it's one of those things where you don't really understand the the difference until you're in it um, and you're amongst like all these great players. And so um, I've just learned a lot about training and building habits um, and stuff like that to, to make sure I'm setting myself up for success. Um, and so I would just say that my goals for this season specifically is to be consistent in providing goals and assists and creating chances. Um, I last season was my first time getting on the score sheet and on the just the board of, of with scoring and assisting. Um, but I so my goal is to just do more of that um, and continue to to raise the level every time I step on the field. How would you describe who you are as a player to those who are going to see you for the first time playing um, for Gotham FC? I would describe myself as a player as more of the passing and uh, creating chances type of player. Um, I like to take players 1v1. Um, if I'm playing on the outside, um, if I'm in the midfield, um, I'm definitely looking for little combinations. Um, amongst the midfield and then finding that final through ball. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite things to do. Um, but so, yeah, I would just say just a playmaker um, in, in being a game changer. Excellent. We have a question from Sandra Herrera. Sandra, your line is open. Just please introduce your, your outlet. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Sandra Dada from CBS Sports. Um, I just heard you describe yourself a little bit more as of a collaborative player. Um, and you're someone that is new to the team uh, being acquired over off season. So now that there's been a few weeks within preseason with this team, well, which of some of your teammates have you enjoyed um, playing alongside, whether it's in scrimmages or going through trainings with, um, with, with Gotham so far? Um, I've honestly enjoyed playing with pretty much everybody. Um, I would say Jenna is somebody that I looked forward to playing with. Um, we met during a youth camp, um, and I just remember thinking that she was so good. Um, and so I was really excited that she got drafted here and to kind of combine with her a little bit and play with her in the midfield, um, if that's where we both end up playing. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course, you want to play with players like Midge and, and Lynn, um, Efi as well along the front line. Um, so it's just, it's been, really cool to see just the different types of style of play that everybody has to offer. Um, and then just working off them. Um, I feel like we've, or I guess I've like connected um, just really well with pretty much, I don't know, like everybody, like, I feel like I, there's always, there's always something that um, you can, I guess, kind of like go off each other from, like you start to learn each other's habits. Um, and and strengths um and so yeah i mean it's it's just been good working with everybody on the team everybody works so hard and is so competitive um and that's just great to be around all right any final questions from the room all right any final hands raised online all right thank you guys thank you <laughs> thank you guys for those in the room we'll bump up the volume a little bit thank you um, next up, we have Mitch first. You announced your contract today, which is very exciting that you'll be a part of Gotham for a couple of years to come. Um, and you've also spent some time with the national team recently. Talk about your commitment to the club and to Gotham FC. Um, yeah, I think it all is said in the contract. Uh, I don't take signing anything very lightly. <laughs> so it was a decision that I thought about for a long time. And I really considered where I wanted to be, what I wanted my career to look like in this stage of my life. And there really was no other option. It was it was Gotham. And looking forward to this season, tell us some of the things you're excited about after going through preseason, getting to know and play with your teammates. What are you excited about? 
I'm just really excited to play. I mean, that's, that's why I'm here. That's, that's why all the players are here. We just, we love the game and we want to get paid. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm pumped for the season. I have really enjoyed the time I've spent with the coaching staff. I love the style of play that we're, we're learning. And I feel like I'm learning every day. So I'm, I'm super excited to show everybody what we've been working on. Excellent. We'll take some questions from the room first. Um, just give us your name and your media outlet. Go ahead, Brittany. Uh, two questions for you. One, I'm curious, how uh, has the off season been down in Florida of prepping for this current preseason and the upcoming season? It's actually prepped me <laughs> really well. Uh, I talk about how in the past off seasons I was I hop a lot of fences to train. I hop fences to get on fields with a bag of balls. I'm by myself. It's cold. It's really, really cold in Maryland during the December, January months. And it's difficult. It's difficult to find people who will consistently go outside and play, you know, small sided. It's hard to take care of your body. It's cold, like muscles are pulling. And the off season, it actually gave me such a great opportunity to get quality training in with other individual players who I personally rate and think are really good. And, you know, we had physios every day. <laughs> we had a chef. <laughs> so I was really well taken care of and felt like it put me in the best position to go into a really long year of football. Awesome. Um, and I'm just curious about since uh, joining the back of the team after being an athlete. It's been such a pleasant surprise. We, unfortunately, because of the timing of She Believes in New Zealand, we weren't able to spend any time on the field with Gotham um, before we left for She Believes. And coming back, I didn't know what to expect, but it's been incredible, to be quite honest. It's been one of my favorite preseasons I've ever had in my career. I already feel like I've been learning so much, and Juan and the entire staff, they're really hard <laughs> on all of us. But I have so much respect for them because in this small time, they've been really fair. They've given, given everyone an equal opportunity to earn a spot. Um, which is really, really rare in these types of environments. You know, coaches come in with their plans and it's, it's this is my 11, this is who it's going to be. But he's made it very clear that maybe he has an idea of an 11. I don't know, but he's giving everyone an opportunity to, to win that spot. And I, I have a lot of respect for that. Hi, Mitch. Uh, Jenna Pinelli with Equalizer. Good to see you. Um, just some of your personal goals this year, obviously, you know, Gotham will want to be on the up and up, World Cup year, just kind of what are you looking forward to working on um, both here and with the national team? Yeah, I want to score goals. Uh, last year is not something that was enjoyable for me, not scoring goals. It makes me sick. And <laughs> this year I want to score goals um, on both the national team and for club. I want to be a top player in both settings. So that's all I'm after. Um, and New Jersey's, how do you feel about these? What do you, what do you think about today, Media Day and all this? I personally love Media Day. It's yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> and <laughs> Ashlyn has been uh, down at the photo shoots directing, and she's someone who I trust with aesthetically pleasing things. Mm -hmm. So it's been really enjoyable. They also paired me with EP, so that's been fun. We made a TikTok. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I like the jerseys. I think they're, they're beautiful. I, I love that it kind of has this modern futuristic look but still maintaining the, you know, the core of what Gotham is um, from last year. So it's really cool. They did a good job. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's take some questions from the virtual world. Jonathan Tanwell from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Jonathan, go ahead, your line's open. Thanks, Krista. Hey, Midge, um, two for you. The first is you mentioned that Juan Carlos hasn't really laid out what he thinks is his quote unquote, absolute number one, first 11 yet. Um, what's that been like for you, given how many different possible formations, tactics, and so on that this team could play with the attacking set that it's got? And second of all, given how ferocious the competition is for the forward spots on the World Cup team, do you think you really have to come flying out of the gate here to make a statement to get on the plane? So for your first question, I want to clarify while the starting lineup hasn't been determined and everyone has had an equal opportunity to win a spot in that 11, Quan's tactics are very clear. We all understand exactly what our roles and responsibilities are. And I also understand the roles and responsibilities of other positions because he's very good at making sure everyone knows that we're on the same page. So 
tactically, um, technically, in every way, we all know what we're supposed to be doing. So I feel extremely comfortable and extremely confident that whoever the 11 is going to be will do exactly what he wants them to do. Um, when it comes to the national team, I think, of course, I think it's obvious. I think um, regardless of how I'm coming from last year, how I'm coming from camps, the plan is always to come flying out of the gate and be the best possible version of myself as possible. Thank you, Mitch. Our next is from Nubia. Nubia, just give your name and outlet. Yep. Hi, it's Nubia with the Shea Butter FC podcast. So I have two questions. My first one, um, EA just announced their partnership with the NWSL. So I'd love to get your thoughts on that as you were featured in their trailer. And then with going back with the off season, it kind of highlights, you know, how black creatives can like take on the soccer space, whether that's through fashion and making like the enterprise that you did. So just your thoughts on, you know, more like, I guess black culture intersected with the soccer space. It's really exciting for EA to be a part of the Inverse Cell world. Um, I think it's long overdue. I think we've been here and I think we should have been in the game. I was tired of playing with other players when I rate myself higher. That being said, I think my ratings are very low <laughs> for, <laughs> for what they gave me and I wasn't happy about all of them, but I actually like my character. I think it looks really similar to me and I play with myself a lot or I will. I had the game when EA came and I was playing with myself a lot. <laughs> so I'm excited <laughs> that we're all in the game. Um, your second question, intersection, I think you said of black culture into women's soccer and yourself, is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think the space is there for the taking and I'm excited to to be a part of it and I'm excited to, you know, help other people feel more comfortable in this space for sure. All right, next we have Sandra Arreya. Sandra? Hey there, Sandra from uh, CBS Sports. Um, I just wanted to, to ask you a little bit more about the the new contract uh, with Gotham. You, you know, you've been with the team for uh, some time. I mean, you were part of a rebrand. They acquired you back in 2020. And I just wanted to sort of hear your perspective of, you know, being with the team, going through something like that, uh, like a rebrand with them and kind of being that core player. Um, yeah, Oliver Bush uh, also mentioned in the release that you're someone that they want to continue to, to build with. Um, so I just wanted to hear your perspectives of, you know, being with the franchise, uh, from those early days in 2020 to, to now? Yeah. Um, when I came to Sky Blue, <laughs> it was it was unexpected and um, I didn't, it was unexpected. And every year since then, I've had, I think, a new coach just about. I've, I've had a different coach every year. And now I feel a distinct difference. I think, I think there's a, there's a change and you can kind of feel a shift, you know, in the locker room, a shift with media a shift with the, the staff on the business side and on the club side. And it feels like, you know, we're really pushing together to make this club the best possible club that it can be the best in the resell, the best globally. And we have a long way to go, but I'm, I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of that plan because I believe in it. And you know, I'm going to do everything I can to, to make it happen. All right, we have time for one or two more questions. Um, we'll take Carrie or Kari Anderson online and then a couple more in the room. Yeah, hi. Um, so my name is Carrie Anderson. I'm the freelance journalist. And I just had a question about, um, you know, kind of generally, you've gained a lot of visibility, both as an NWSL player and also on the national team. And I guess I'm wondering if you ever get recognized or if you inter interact with fans a lot and how does that feel for you to, to be in that position? Yeah, it depends on the, the space that I'm in. You know, if I go to a, there's a like a woman's soccer bar in Portland and <laughs> if I go there, yeah, I will, <laughs> I'll be recognized. But I also am in like the New York, New Jersey area, <laughs> which is highly populated, highly concentrated in there's like stars every day that I see and I'm like, oh, hi, but other people don't even notice them. So um, yes and no. And when I am, it's, uh, it's very nice. It's, I feel like really honored and it's say hi, if you see me, <laughs> I say hi back. <laughs> All right, thank you. A couple more in the room. Uh, Jenna, oh, there's three more in the room. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I really like what you were saying, um, the Sandra's question about like how you came up with Skyblue and the evolution of the club. Um, and I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about kind of team identity, because I feel like last season, that was like a, that was like a tough question to answer, but it kind of feels like based on what you said and what we're seeing, that there's definitely a shift towards kind of like creating and finding that and just kind of like how you see that identity of the team and how that will be reflected in, in kind of what you do on the field and, and kind of what you do in the preseason and all that. Yeah, I mean, it's still a complex question yeah. because we're so early in preseason and I think you don't really know the identity of anyone in preseason until you've seen them at their lowest, you know, when, it, when things aren't going your way and things are really hard. That being said, I think I personally think we have the personnel and the leadership to be a really resilient and trailblazing team. Like for, for lack of a better word, I, I think that we can really lead the way and and start, you know, a new style. I guess I'm kind of hinting about how I think we're gonna play <laughs> a new style on the field and and a new energy and a new vibe off the field that you know, starts to intersect with, I think, mainstream sports industry. Yeah. And especially just tying that into like being the New York, New Jersey club that I give style. I think, and I'm, I'm just like talking now, but I think that's really great. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Um, here and there, and then we'll end. Um, Cameron Albert, Hudson River Blue. Um, can you talk a little bit about the addition of Lynn Williams to the team, um, changes or contributes to the attack, and then uh, how you play the specific specifically uh lynn is great <laughs> i've had a friendship with lynn for a while i actually can't even think about how it started it was a long time ago but when i found out she was going to the team i was obviously very excited i think the process of how it happened uh you know she came to lunch <laughs> right after we all sat out and i was like hey are you happy <laughs> um I, I'm really excited to play with her. I think she's an undeniable talent. I think she's so difficult to defend and to deal with. And I think it makes our attack so multifaceted that people are going to have to resolve a lot of problems. And at the end of the day, they're just gonna have to pick what they think the biggest ones are. Mm -hmm. All right, important. Yeah, uh, so now I think season three of um, joining in, you know, playing with EP. So I was curious uh, what your relationship has been like to me plans for maybe some goal celebrations coming <laughs> so Pino actually at camp she was talking about how we're so boring and we don't do good goal celebrations and was trying to get everybody to do goal celebrations but Mal was the only one who kept scoring and obviously she just does like the like I'm so happy because that's who she is <laughs> but um I we were like talking about it and I agree I think I think more goal celebrations will be in Gotham's future. And uh, can you just talk a little bit about your relationship? Oh yeah, I mean that's my girl. Evie's like my bestie. Um, I we got drafted eight and nine. I was nine. <laughs> she doesn't let me forget it. Um, and then we got distributed to Portland after Boston uh, folded, and we were roommates there. And then somehow we ended back up together here. And I think that's a really rare partnership to find on and off the field, especially someone that I, I get along with so well and who I trust and appreciate. So I'm just, I'm so excited to play another year with her. And uh, yeah. All right. Yeah,
Thank you for those online. Apologies that our camera went out, but we should be up and running. Okay. All right, we have Imani Dorsey with us now. Imani, we've been through preseason. You've gotten to see a little bit of the new team um, from last year to now. Tell us a little bit about what's new and what you're excited for in the future. I mean, we've had a, a lot of changes this year, new coaching staff, um, a lot of new players, um, a lot of turnover, but a lot of distance to the front office but the biggest thing for me seems like just the investment in the club is something that's been really special to see being drafted here in 2019 I've seen the club change a lot and I've been through a lot of ups and downs with this club but um, I've never been more excited and eager to see um, where this club can go so. all right so we'll first take questions in the room and then we'll take questions from those online so again similar to last session please click the raise hand icon if you have a question so in the room we'll start with jenna hi i'm on the equalizer um yeah i mean i wanted to ask you we're drafted to this team we've been at this team through through it all um this may just that smidge about was just kind of like the identity of gotham obviously last mm -hmm. season was tough we don't need to go back into that but you know kind of seeing all this change and the coaching staff you know, front office, as you mentioned, um, what, what do you see with the evolution of Gotham's identity, both, you know, style of play and just as like a brand identity? Yeah, I mean, being drafted here um, initially, I always connected Gotham with, or connected this club with a grit and a mentality um, 
that should be pervasive. And, but something that I think has stuck with me is the community and the fans have been always so incredibly supportive and in it right there with us. Um, and I don't, I can't speak for other clubs, but I know that I am incredibly grateful for that. So um, through the ups and downs, I know that this community has our back and is going to fight right there with us. And it it's very um, similar to the market of New York, New Jersey. So I think that's like so cool and that we're coming into, we're continuing to grow and change, but I feel like the roots are still, are still the same. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. Um, Cameron Albert, uh, Hudson River Blue. Um, with the new staff and head coach, um, Juan Carlos Alvarez, and um, he's been talking to us about um, how he's implementing style of play to make sure that everyone on the team understands their responsibilities defensively. Can you um, talk a little bit about that process and how the team is kind of shaping up to that part of the game? Absolutely. I think. Juan and the coaching staff has a, have a vision, and from day one, we've known um, that there will be expectations for us, and within those expectations, it'll be very clear of what, what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong, and I think that, as a player, is, is very helpful because the, the one thing you want as a player on the field is to know that um, everyone on the team is understanding the game plan and, and working towards the same thing, and so preseason has been a grind preseason has been really tough mentally more so like getting the tactics and learning um, the style of play and also trying to implement your own creativity and uniqueness the way soccer is within that system so um, uh, but I want it to be hard it should be hard it should be hard now so that when we're in season it's like we're flying and all these things are um, automatisms is what Juan says a lot defensive automatisms and attacking automatism it's like that's when I'm at my best is when I know that I'm doing things instinctually. And the more that I work on and focus it on it now in preseason, it's like, I won't even be thinking about it in season. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm um, just curious what the plans have been, uh, you know, looking forward to being on BWPC sport. Um, yeah, I'm just curious if any plans to come back to the yeah, we're really excited about this year. I think last year was a big year in terms of trying to plan and present a lot as the Black Women's Player Collective, but I think now um, we're just trying to um, replicate that and also on like a slightly bigger scale. So for um, like Juneteenth, um, we're hoping to do something fun in person and also like on social media um, and leading up to our NWSL championship. I think that was a really special event, I think, for all of the players in the league to see, to like, to be able to come together and have an event. Um, but I think the, the Black Women's Player Collective is, is really excited about finding um, opportunities to bring people together. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks. All right, we'll take some virtual questions. Nubia, your line is now open. All right. Hi, Imani. This is Nubia with the Shea Butter FC podcast. Um, my first question is that um, EA just announced their partnership with the NWSL. Just getting your thoughts on that. And then my second question, transitioning from Black History Month to Women's History Month, what has been the biggest benefit or joy from working with the Black Women Player Collective and just being a Black woman in general? Amazing questions. Thank you. So I've gotten like a bunch of text messages from like family and friends about the EA partnership, but especially the NWSL coming to FIFA. And my sister's like, I'm going to, my whole team is going to be you. And I'm like, I literally like cannot even imagine like seeing myself on a video game and seeing people that I play against on video games. I think um, as, as hard as we work in this sport to seemingly like show other people how legitimate we are, I don't think there's like, there's not many other things that I can think of in terms of being on a video game that anybody can have access to and see you as the same as um, the men's side is something that I really can't I still haven't wrapped my head around. So it'll be a very weird, surreal moment for me to see myself as like a video game character, but it's a also like incredibly cool moment. Um, so that's really cool. I'm really excited about it. I think it's awesome. And in terms of um, 
Black History Month moving into Women's History Month, um, the Black Women's Players Collective were so excited about it. And I just think um, since starting the organization and being so heavily involved, it's been so just incredible for me in terms of um, really recognizing and um, celebrating publicly like my identity as a Black woman and sharing that in the soccer space. I always talk about how it felt like my identity as a Black woman and my identity as a soccer player felt like two separate things growing up. But to be able to bring those together and um, find community in that in this in soccer is is so special and I'm so grateful for it. All right, our next question will come from Jonathan Tanwald. Jonathan, your line is open. Thanks, Krista, and thanks, Imani, for the time. This is Jonathan Tannenwald of the Philadelphia Inquirer. You know, you were talking about the tactics a few minutes ago and, and how excited you've been to, to get into them. And Midge was here a few minutes ago talking about how Juan Carlos has been very specific in what he wants to see and made sure that the instructions are well conveyed. So I was hoping you'd, you'd tell us a bit, you know, what are we going to see from this team this year stylistically? Because I think for a lot of us on the outside, it's still a bit of a blank canvas. Mm, yeah, I think in terms of the biggest takeaways, I've the biggest mantra that I've taken away from Juan is smarter, not harder. And um, I think the attacking power that we have in this club and the type of players that we have is something that is undeniable. But the way that we're going to be successful this year is um, how can we continuously stay organized and um, create attacks that are long lasting and, um, and manipulating teams and making it hard for them to understand us. So knowing when we can go forward is very important in this league. It's a, it's a transitional league, um, but understanding how to stay organized and how to, um, to break teams down in a smart way is definitely like what I'm, what I'm taking away from this preseason. All right. Um, any more questions from the room? Go ahead, Jen. Um, yeah. So, you know, going back to how you've been with this team since the mm -hmm. start, obviously it's been a big upgrade to go from Rutgers to Red Bull. And now you went from, you know, training in, in a bubble in Jersey to having a whole month out of Florida. Like what was, was that like, do you feel like this has prepared you in a, in a way that will set you up for better success for the season? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love Florida. I was <laughs> sad to come home. Don't tell my boyfriend and my dog that. No, I, I miss them terribly, but it was just really nice to come in, especially dependent on where um, people did their off season. I was predominantly in Maryland um, in New Jersey. So it was cold. Oh. <laughs> um, so it's just like another level of, um, community, especially like to start the year, um, getting in that frame of mind of like, this is training camp. This is the time to like grind and work hard. Um, and just to be close to the field. And, um, it was a level of connection that I think we also needed since there were so many new faces. I think it helped a lot to have lots of meals together, um, to, to watch games together, to bike to and from training together. It, I think it helped a lot. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Today. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Good. All right. Uh, looks like we might have one more from Jonathan Tanwald online. If there are any other journalists online, please raise your hand. Thanks, Krista. Um, to expand a little bit on a point that we were talking about, I had a follow-up question. I should have just asked it out of the gate because I'd forgotten that I was going to get muted right away, which is on me. Um, how do you think this team is going to make use of width this year with yourself, Lynn, Midge, all these other uh, – Sabrina Flores, all these players who can do a lot of different things in wide positions. How do you think it's all going to come together this year? Because it could, again, going back to the previous point, given Juan's history as a manager, it could go in a lot of different ways. So what are your expectations? Yeah, I think you bring up a great point that I think we recognize as a team is we have a lot of attacking strengths in our wing. And um, like I was saying before, in being smart, I think it's um, – finding ways to create two V ones in the, in the flank. Um, we believe that we're going to be the stronger, the, have, have the one up in the one V ones in those um, situations. So the more time we can give our wide players time to get in behind a back line um, with time and space is we think will, will make us successful. All right. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Johnny. Thanks, um, Thanks everybody. Good set. to see you. Back shortly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Amani Dorsey. Amani <laughs> Dorsey. <laughs>
I was like, wait, where? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, you're sitting there. Yeah. All right. For all of our journalists, if you could please say your name so they can all hear you say it. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> my name is Ifoma Anamano, or I go by Ifi. Awesome. Now, Ifi, you are a part of the Nigerian national team and also yes. with Gotham. What would it mean to you this summer to represent Gotham FC, New York, New Jersey, and Nigeria? Um, I mean, it, I have a lot on my plate, and I think, but it's, I can't complain. It's a dream come true. I think a lot of people would dream of playing for their country and that is on the highest stage the world cup it's going to be my first world cup and you know back with the team back with gotham um i'm excited for this year i know we're going to be very special we're coming in hot especially off of next year uh, last year um not exactly the year we wanted but i'm not concerned at all about how we're going to approach this year i'm incredibly excited to play with the you know caliber of players that i'm playing with and then Nigeria, we're a very talented team. I think we're underrated. We have things that we're working on, but um, I'm really excited about what we're going to bring to the World Cup. So yeah, just watch out. <laughs> All right, we'll first take questions from those in the room. So if you have a question, raise your hand. Similarly, those online, please click the raise hand icon. In the room first, question for EP. Yeah, we'll just go around. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Cameron Albert, that's a little bit late. Um, can you talk a, a little bit about what the addition to the Republic Warriors does to Gotham's attack and then um, how you play specific, I said up again, uh, specifically, sorry, thank you. Um, yeah, I think Lynn is an excellent addition. She has uh, been in the league for a while now, um, a talented player, a great goal scorer um, with incredible pace. Um, I think it just adds to our attack. I think it's going to be very powerful. Um, the style of play that we're looking at, we're definitely looking to control the game. So I think that will only lead to more goals or scoring opportunities for us, which I feel like we lacked last season. So, um, yeah, I think it just adds to our attacking power. And I'm really excited to play with her and alongside of her alongside her. And um, honestly, I like to learn from all players that I, I play with. So, you know, she's got great experience um, on a championship team um when she was with north carolina for um the year she was with them so um yeah excited about you know what we're going to bring this season all right courtney hi courtney smith with us for united and also with our tie again uh, i guess i'm curious how it's been rejoining the team um after national campaign um it's been great i think you know i was in mexico so mexico was great um, got some coffee beans, which was fantastic. Um, uh, we had, you know, very definitely a learning experience for us. Um, 
with Nigeria um, in Mexico, we lost our first two games and were able to pick it back up in the last game because I think we always learn from the mistakes that we make in the prior games. And then, you know, coming back here, I was just sort of ready to get back into it. Um, you know, with the new coach, I just want to sort of get into the swing of things and I'm excited um, about our style of play. So I'm always excited to go to training and seeing what, what we learn. So I was kind of almost like bummed that I was gone for like 10 days. I'm like, oh, I'm missing out on like whatever we're doing at training. But um, obviously I always enjoy my time, um, you know, with the Nigerian squad. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back with the team too. All right, we'll go to some of our questions. Oh, go ahead, Jess. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hold on, Nubia. <laughs> sorry, Nubia. <laughs> um, Jenna Tonelli with Equalizer. Good to see you. Um, just you know, something that I could ask Midge and Amani about is like the the identity of Gotham coming into this new season. Like obviously mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. rehash last year, but like that was not what I think anybody for Obama came in off the team expected. Absolutely. Um, and so kind of what do you see like going into this next season? with, you know, kind of like, you know, this big media day with Fran refreshing and, you know, new coach, all that, like, where do you see the identity of the team going on and off the field? Yeah, I think, you know, with Gotham, I think we haven't really lived up to our rebrand just yet. Um, obviously, last year is not what we expected. Um, and I don't think we can get any, any lower than that. And so, um, yeah, we're just looking to stay focused and actually rebuild. I think a lot of teams take us for granted, I would say. Um, the old identity of Sky Blue. I've been in this league for a little bit and, you know, it's a team that you kind of just were like excited to play because it was expectation you were going to win. But that is of the past. Um, I don't think any team necessarily thinks that of Gotham. I think, you know, last year is probably a bad representation, but I don't think any team really thinks that of us. And I don't, I hope, I mean, if they do, I think they're in for a rude awakening at the end of the day. So um, yeah, I think, at the end, of, I think for Gotham, you know, we're going to show our grit. You know, I think we're going to, you know, control this, control the play on the field. Um, resilience, you know, um, things happen. And I think th- during the season and it's how you bounce back. And I think that's something that we lacked last year. But I definitely think that's something that we're going to bring back this year. Um, so, yeah, I just like see us being brave, courageous, powerful on the field. And that's what I hope for us. Um, and you mentioned coffee beans in Mexico. How do you put yeah. your coffee order? What, how do you pick your coffee? <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. I, it kind of depends on how I feel that day. Oh. So for the most part, like I have an express machine at home. And so what I've started to do is like buy coffee beans yeah. in any location that I'm in. Um, buy them fresh yeah. whole beans, right? And I grind them myself. Um, so usually I just do like a double shot of espresso if I just need the caffeine. Um, sometimes I do like a dirty chai um, if I need something sweet. Um, but yeah, I don't really do just like, or an Americano. For some reason, coffee makes me a little jumpy. So if I just do <laughs> coffee instead of like an espresso, for, I don't know if there's a difference. Maybe it's in my mind, but um, yeah, I'm pretty boring on that aspect, no, I think. That sounds great. I yeah. Love, love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nubia, go ahead. Yep. Hi, this is Nubia with the Shea Butter FC podcast. So two things, your thoughts on the recent EA partnership with the NWSL. And Midge just recently talked about how Ashlyn Harris is apparently having y'all do TikTok. So I don't know if you can reveal anything about that, but what should fans expect? Oh, man. I mean, with Ashlyn on the, you know, creating team, it's going to be it's it, you guys are probably in for a surprise. Um I'm really excited about it. I know we're going to get into some crazy things, but I think it's going to entertain everybody, um, especially with the ideas that that girl has. Um, In terms of the EA sports, this is going to sound bad, but I am currently not really on Instagram like that for the last like year. So I I pop into posts every so often. So the EA sports thing is sort of new to me, so I don't really know too much about it. But the fact that the interview cell is finally getting on that platform, I think, you know, EA Sports has FIFA, right? Right? Okay. EA Sports has FIFA. So, (laughs) you know, being on FIFA is dope. I think it's, you know, I know a lot of people who play FIFA and play video games. So, you know, finally having the, you know, NWSL on that platform, I think it's just going to make our star rise. All right. Um, Our next question is from Jonathan Tanwell. Jonathan, go ahead. 
Thanks, Krista, and thanks, Ify, for the time. This is Jonathan Tannenwald of the Philadelphia Inquirer. You know, you, you talked about it a few minutes ago with uh, with Lynn coming in, and, you know, obviously you had a bit of a spicy quote there a minute ago with teams, you know, saying that teams take Gotham for granted. But, you know, we have seen the lack of goals in the last few years. It's no secret to anybody. And how much better, you know, is this team? And is this team finally, for the first time in a couple of years, got the elite attacking talent to break through in this league? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, like I stated before, I think last year was a bit of an off season for us. I think the season before we had um, a lot of creativity and I think we had, I think me and Margaret were one of the top goal scorers of not last year, but the prior year. So um, yeah, I think last year we did struggle with not just goals, but even goal creation or opportunity creation. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, Lynn is a player who, you know, brings that pace and, you know, kind of makes backlines rethink their strategy. And so, yeah, I think obviously with the, with um, her joining us, um, it's going to lead to more goals. I think it's inevitable. Um, but I mean, I think we've brought in some other players who will help with the goal creation as well, um, which is something that I think we've lacked a little bit in the past. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about it. And um, yeah, I think all these sort of elements that we've brought in are going to help, including the new coaching staff. All right. Um, a reminder to our journalists on the line, if you have any questions, to please click the raise hand icon in the room. If you have any additional questions, please raise your hands. Oh, if I'm on a mono. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I guess I'm just curious how, um, how you feel about the new kit. You have Team Ryan has told us that it feels like more, more New York, it's like more fashion oriented. I'm just curious. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I think, you know, it kind of represents the elements that we're trying to hit in terms of like, you know, grit and, you know, keep representing New Jersey and New York. Um, and it's definitely more creative. I think it's no secret that our jerseys in the past couple of years have been a little bit more simple. Um, and pretty much a uh, standard of over the last, I think it's three years, in fact. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about these new kits. I think they look good. Um, you know, I, I'm enjoying the new look. I like the, you know, I think we have to strip down the side and I like the Gotham FC, um, on down the side. So, um, yeah, I, I like the new kits. All right. We have one more from Jonathan Tannenwald, um, in the virtual world, Jonathan. Thanks. Thanks, Krista. Um, you know, uh, Imani was in here a couple of minutes ago and I asked her about the many possibilities of what this team can do this year with, with whether it's a 4-3-3 or a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3. All of us on the outside have been looking sort of at a blank canvas with a new manager coming in. You know, what are, obviously, I know you're a center forward, obviously, you're not one of the wide players, but what do you think it is going to be like in terms of the chance creation that you've mentioned in the number of different places that the ball might come to you from, that we might see some different things this year than we've seen before? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I don't want to give too much away before the season starts in terms of a formation. I think we're still playing with a few things as well, but I think um, I would say if we're going off of last year, I think we mostly relied on sort of a counterattack. I think if you looked at our heat map, I think most of the balls came from defense to forwards. Like, I think right now we're working on playing through our middle. So I think you can get goals from the middle. You can get goals from the wide flanks. Um, even our defenders, I think, in you know, what we're looking to play, have an opportunity to score. We're going to be incredibly aggressive. Um, you know, I think we're looking at, you know, really testing teams and their ability to get through us. Um, and we're looking to control the tempo of the game. I think, you know, if you look at different um, playing styles or different teams around the world, you can say that um, some teams don't really look to have the ball and really rely on a counter attack. I think um, that's not necessarily what we're trying to do. I think we can score in transition. I think this league transitions a lot, um, but we're looking to control the tempo and, um, really push teams. And I think we can get goals from all over the field um, to be sort of honest slash a little vague, but um, yeah, I think, I think people will really like um, how we play and what they see from us this year. All right. Thank you.